test. Ready? Alright guys, welcome to another vlog. It is the same day as I finished up the vlog yesterday, but I finished up on a very somber subject of the S15 being crashed, and that freaking sucked. But, we are going to Tasmania today, we're running an event down there tomorrow, uh, so we have to fly down there today. But I do have a few hours today, which I'm going to take you guys over my S13 convertible. I know I've had little bits, um, you know, looked at it little bits here and there, but I want to go over it in detail with you guys today before I have to catch this damn flight to the Antarctic, which is Tasmania. It's going to be extremely cold down there, and I'm not looking forward to the cold, but I am looking forward to the drifting. Um, we run the Tasmania series. It's a lot of fun down there. Uh, the local drivers are very good drivers, especially pro class, very, very good driving. So we'll definitely get some shots of that stuff for the vlog tomorrow. But otherwise, guys, please hit that subscribe button, throw us a comment, throw us a like, and let me know. I've got a question for you guys. Would you prefer vlogs to be sort of uh, bite size, i.e. sort of 10 minute long vlogs, or are you guys down with the, you know, 20, 25 minute vlogs um, on the days when I can? Uh, just let me know down below, um, even if I mix it up, you know, obviously there's some days I'm quite busy, some days aren't as busy. Uh, but yeah, let me know guys, very curious, uh, like I said, I'm loving doing the vlogging. So please subscribe, share it to your friends, do all that fun stuff, and yeah, let's go take a look at the S13 after we get some coffee. Coffee first. Thank you. Mm. Coffee. Oh. Definitely need it. Then I got this. Ah, let's pull the storage device out. Today we go bumper to bumper. What's the other one called? Build breakdown. I'm gonna do a build breakdown on my S13 convertible. Insert. Crazy graphics here, but I don't know how to do crazy graphics. Got the boys to help me because I don't know what half of the stuff is. <laughs> well, what good are my other ones? Huh? What good are my other ones? <laughs> what do we talk about, Russ? You're serious. Start with what you can see, mate. Start with what I can see? Yeah. Alright. So, starting out, we got a genuine origin bonnet. Uh, I picked up second hand because I'm tight. Then we got a copy D-Max body kit uh, type 3 that I got from K-Mac Aero. Rear bars looking a little bit second hand. It's had a few little incidents. Um, also running a smallish wide body. I think it's only a 25mm front and a 20mm wide body, wide body rear. Obviously got my drag wing on there. This is a factory convertible. A lot of people just think it's sort of cut down, but then if you look closely at the back of the car here, it's obviously um, definitely not cut down. So that's how they came. Uh, got some clear tail lights on there. Um, I really want to get some LED tail lights. Uh, set of genuine works XD9s at the moment. Pretty well the outside of the car. Keep it basic, keep it clean. Um, although there is talk of doing um, a more interesting color in the future. Right now we're just gonna stick with black. The overall look of this car I'm really stoked with. Yeah, just get it finished really. This car isn't finished, it's still technically in the build. I've been out testing it and things like that, but it's still very much in the build. What else, Russ? We've spoken about putting potentially a bikini top on it. So. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so that's something we thought about doing is putting the bikini top on. And um, there was something else I was going to say that we thought about doing to the exterior. Ah oh, yeah, so I'm considering going to a rear diffuser setup. And also some ducting for the rear radiator. Ah uh, yeah, yeah, that will definitely be... That's just as much cosmetic as it is mechanical really. Exactly right. Yeah, but what we have an, is an issue where the air doesn't really, um, the air scoops over the car and actually we can be going along pretty fast and if you put your hand here, the air is completely dead. Um, it's not actually flowing over and into the radiator like I'd hoped, which is 
probably why I'm not an, there we go, that's why I'm not an aerospace engineer. Um, so what we're gonna do is I do need to add um, some sort of flap or something here that directs air down into the cabin because I'm having a lot of issues with the cabin filling up with smoke a lot and then we need to add something to the back of here without it being ugly because I really when I had the roll cage built for this car I made sure to have the profile of the car come downwards rather than a normal um, convertible cars where the main hoop always sits up quite high and looks just looks ugly if I'm honest so when the roll cage builder built this car I deliberately made him put the roll cage lower in the car um, especially towards the back so it made the profile of the car go downwards um, and then we mounted the seats as low as possible. So, all right, let's have a look in the engine bay. This is where the party is. It's, it's kind of simple, but it's kind of not at the same time. This is where Russ comes in. <laughs> Fun times. Yeah, yeah, there's, so some of the backstory to this car is this car, this is my second build on this car. The first time it was built, it was done questionably. Um, essentially a lot of the stuff that was in the car the first time around had to be revised and redone again um, so this is sort of stage 1.5 of the build I guess we sort of it was originally built then built again um, by the guys down at Keeley Motorsport so all right let's have a bit of a look around I know that my humongous turbo here is a Borg Warner S475 bigger than Russell's head yeah, that is literally bigger than Russell's head. Um, we also run a thousand cc injectors, but I'm about to upgrade those to two thousand cc injectors so I can start running more power. I have a, I know I'm running an Aeroflow sump, a custom made uh, manifolds that run through to the front of the car, um, which. We did have some issues with it uh, cooking uh, coil packs, no, coil leads on that side, but it's since been sorted out thanks to Mitch. Head studs, cams. And cam. Oh yeah, cam, I'm used to quad cam stuff. <laughs> Dual cam. Um, and that's about it. Not everything else is pretty well factory. It's powered by a link, which I agree to use and use all the time. And it's got every single safety that we can throw at it. So Luke not being mechanical, have any mechanical sympathy. Black Arts did a beautiful uh, lobster exhaust on this car. Yep, that's definitely still a bit warm. It's just such a cool part of the car. Um, in fact, in a burnout competition that I did, um, I went in. Uh, so I went down to Summonats and did a huge burnout in this car, like a two and a half minute long burnout. And it got so hot here in the engine bay that the exhaust actually melted the back of the headlights. So I'll show you that now. If you see that down there is actually melted plastic from the back of the headlights here because it was uh, so hot in here. Yeah, so we had one fire and all it actually was, was we had the, drop, the belt come off and land on the manifolds. Oh, yep, that's hot. Um, so that belt came off, landed on the manifolds and caught on fire. So it wasn't like a proper fire by any means. As far as breathers on this car, um, down to a catch can down in the front corner, if you can see that. Uh, the reason you run like a much, much larger breather setup on a turbo OLS is so you don't end up with any oil going into the exhaust, uh, not exhaust, sorry, into the intake and all that sort of not fun stuff that happens there. Actually, something else I just thought of now while we're here is we have deleted the factory water pump. So if you know an LS, the factory water pump setup is literally right there in front of the motor. The factory water pump setup we wouldn't be able to run the turbo where we run it. Um, so that's been completely deleted. It actually took a whole lot of messing about to do this um, setup. Redone. I'd say, yeah, done then redone. Yeah, that was that was something that was actually redone our second time around because it really is something where we just want to perfect everything in here and have this car bulletproof and then I'll pull it all out and essentially put the chassis uh, and get the chassis completely done. Um, probably end up powder coating, powder coating the entire chassis or something along those lines because uh, it has, you know, it's an 89, I think, S13 Sylvia. Oh, 
So it's an 89, um, so there is rust like any Sylvia. Um, so that's something I want to address in the future. Uh, suspension setup. Obviously, as you already know, I'm definitely a shock man, a Shockworks guy. Um, I absolutely love the Shockworks suspension, but this car runs on an entire set of version 4 GK Tech stuff. So full version 4 GK Tech lock kit. I'll uh, we'll just take a look now. So the full version 4 high clearance arms, version 4 knuckles down there, and then yeah, the shock works. Uh, coilovers we had done in custom rates to suit the uh, LS setup. It's running R33 GTST um, front brakes. And yeah, it, it really is just the whole kit from GK Tech. And then the cross member is sitting a 30 mil further forward. I don't have any bind issues at all. And yeah, run a nice big oil cooler um, at the front as well as a front mount intercooler. We are going to move the oil cooler at some point to the side, uh, that side, because this side is very hot because of the exhaust. Runs a rear radiator setup like your FD style stuff. Yeah, dash eight fuel lines because again, the first time the car was built, they put dash six in, it wouldn't flow enough fuel. And then was the pod filter custom? Actually, I'd remember because we had to order that. Was it a yeah, custom? It was a custom K9 pod filter. We waited like two and a half weeks for that. Okay. I can't remember how much it cost, but I think it, it wasn't too bad, was it? No. No, it wasn't too bad. But basically, that size turbo people aren't normally just bolting pod filters to the front of it but I didn't really have room to uh, plumb it anywhere else so that's where it ended up but it's doing a very very good job it hasn't melted no there's a lot of heat in the front of this car and that hasn't melted we're running a pair of velo seats um, I do love these seats they are super comfortable and even more comfortable now that I've lost some weight but um, they have a really large step on the bottom of them and I want to sit lower in this car um, we've literally taken out the seat the rails that would normally um, where the factory rail would be here um, has been taken out and the floor it's literally mounted flat to the floor as low as it can go but because of the structure of this seat it still sits quite high uh, so it's definitely something I want to sort out for the future so I'll probably at some point say bye bye to these seats in this car at very least these would be, oh, they'd be so cool, but not really, but they would be epic in the 110. Yeah, no, I probably shouldn't put fix packs in the daily. I should though. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. So, first time around, we had a Moon Eye steering wheel on here. Um, just again, due to my height, I'm six foot two. I was having issues with clearance between my knees and the steering wheel, um, and then went back to the old trusty Nardi 350 mil. Um, I will never go lower than anything 350 mil. I prefer 360, but you can't get 360 in the, the concave steering wheel like this. But if you haven't driven with a Nardi before, you're absolutely kidding yourself. I'm not sponsored by them in any way or for any way at all, but. I just feel like when you have a Nardi steering wheel in your car, life is just better. Foot wells, we're running um, these nice alloy um, steps here that were made by my friend down in Melbourne. Well, he's Irish, but he's from Melbourne now. Now, one part of this car which I've told you guys that I'm extremely unhappy with is the wiring. So the wiring in this car is absolutely terrible in the inside the car. If I can just show you what we're sort of dealing with, that is the mess. So, uh, yeah, the gauge, the wiring is absolutely atrocious and that is something we're gonna tend to in the future. Uh, I don't run any gauges at all. Uh, I intend to run a dash at some point. I just haven't decided on a dash whether we're getting link or an aims dash or even though they're basically the same thing. I think we were looking at Link, but then the Link one is exactly the same as the Ames Dash, but the Ames Dash is cheaper. For us, yeah. Yeah, for the guys at Keeley who will help me out with good prices. EK Tech uh, hydraulic handbrake handle with a master setback out of sight. The car is running a TR6060 transmission. Um, I'm hoping in the near future to go to a 
uh, G-Force, uh, like NASCAR four-speed, um, just because this gearbox in this car just feels like it takes forever to change gears, and it's a remote shift, so it feels very disconnected. Um, so that's something I want to sort out for the future. And realistically, it is a six-speed, but fifth gear and sixth gear are so far away from fourth. Um, you know, even at full throttle in fourth gear, you change to fifth gear, and with the size of my turbo, it drops out of boost. We run uh, our water pump up under the dash here. Again, with all dash 16 lines, yeah. I believe. Yeah, dash 16 lines, they run along the footwell and up behind our firewall into the back of the car. Uh, OMP seat belts in here. Um, that I've been really happy with, they work really nice. Nice Hello Kitty uh, center console just out of an S13. Again, I'll probably go to an S15 dash in this car. Um, when we do get all the wiring redone, I'll probably do a full S15 dash center console and then a nice setup in there. And then we've got the Moon Eyes, um, I forget what it's called, uh, Van Mirror or something along those lines that runs the whole way across and it's not it's definitely not really that functional but i think it looks cool so that's why i put it in the car it's a cut out but i did leave the side intrusions in uh just to stop any um hits we do have from going further than they need to and the car is running a full cams roll cage um like i said earlier we we deliberately had it made lower rather than being I think normally a roll cage in a convertible would sit probably another two or three inches maybe four inches higher and I think they just look awkward so it was really one of my like key points when building this roll cage was to make sure that it um didn't look stupid so we are going to go into the back of the car now boys will just pop this off so we can show you guys some of the cooling setup so we're running, right now, I'm running a freaking eBay radiator. That's an eBay VZ Commodore radiator. Um, then, slightly modified, we put dash fittings on um, and welded up one of the outlets. And basically, it hasn't been terrible. It's been fine on the dyno, but as soon as we go put any decent load at the track, it just... Gets hot, yeah. Yeah, so it's really weird because even in um, a burnout, like I, I did a two and a half minute burnout in this car, pretty much on rev limiter the whole time. It was 42 degrees centigrade outside. So like I said, I was melting the headlights, the car got, it was that hot outside. But the car didn't hit temp cut until literally two and a half minute mark. Um, but then, I take it to the track with good tires and stuff and I can do three or four runs, high speed runs and the car will climb in temperature. So obviously the load um, is affecting it more and the fact that that air is going straight over the cabin like we said before. So having a catcher set up is definitely going to help. But I have a really awesome PWR radiator that's even thicker than the one in here and obviously PWR technology, they do stuff in NASCAR, F1. McLaren, you name it, they do all kinds of crazy supercar stuff and racing car stuff. So I've got a radiator from those guys, so thank you to them. Electric porter pump, pumps obviously from the engine, through the car, goes up into the radiator, and then we have a header tank also in the back that helps us bleed the whole setup. Yep. Yeah. And then we have another reservoir off that that runs down into the boot. And again, this area we're keeping fairly simple. Um, I do still need to add um, clear perspex up to the remainder of the roll cage to complete the rear firewall. And get that, like I said, get that PWI radiator in and get the ducting in on the piece that we just took off. So it'll help air get ducted straight into that radiator. All these dints in this radiator that you can see are actually from hail. So I was driving down the highway on the way to Summonats early this year and it started hailing and I just sort of, I wasn't so fussed about my tow car getting dints because it's insured, but then I sort of stressed out for half a second about the S13 and then realized it's all fiberglass anyway, other than the boot lid and the doors. So I figured I'd just power through the hail. 
I didn't even think about the fact that hail would go straight through and hit my radiator. So I got no damage on the car anywhere, none, nothing on any panels, but the radiator did get a bunch of uh, dints and things like this. At least it's a cheap one and not the PWR one. So anyway, let's take a look in the boot. Being under here just a little bit, you can sort of see up here, we're running a, again the full version for GK Tech setup. Um, I've been really, really happy with the amount of grip this car's putting out. Um, I've only put it on semis, I think once or twice, and the grip is, it's, it's a really fast car. But um, again, I still, I still haven't even gone aggressive really with the alignment. I haven't wound much toe into it yet. Uh, we're running a 350Z diff, a uh, shimmed tight, and we're running the 350Z half shafts as well. Um, I have broken one, but we think that that was from the shaft bottoming out. Basically, because I only run a really small wide body on this car, um, we didn't, if anything, the arms are actually wound in um, shorter than um, uh, the factory arms are. So that's something, again, I may need to go to a wider rear wide body if I do want to um, have more longevity, I guess. That's about all. It's a very simple car in... In ways it's very simple, but in other ways it's a very complicated car. But I'm, I do love it. It's such a fun car. And once we do get all the little niggly stuff out of the way and this car running like I want it to, I'm gonna absolutely start sending the crap out of this car. So thank you for watching guys. Please subscribe. Uh, we will be in Tasmania now as you're watching this vlog and I'll get as much footage as I can from the Tasmanian series. Hopefully I'll get to jump in a car and have a drive. But I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.